Have business studies essays got you down? Are you stressing? How are you going to do this essay for your exam? I'm so nervous. I don't know what to do. I've got the answer for you. So stay tuned and learn how to write business studies essays. Well, if that didn't sound like an ad that came from the 90s to help you clean your floors better, I don't know what will. <laughs> but truly, in today's video, I will show you step by step how to plan and how to write your essays. Please take note that I've received the information in these slides from past papers as well as study guides that I have found online. I've put them in the links below as well as at the end of my video. Today's video I decided to do as I've received quite a few requests on doing past paper videos as well as essay based questions. So I decided <laughs> I heeded your call and I heard you all loud and clear. So I decided to make a video on how to answer essay questions. I am looking into doing question papers just understand it does take a lot of editing and there is a lot of processing when it comes to making the slides for the past papers and there's a lot of knowledge that comes into explaining the memo and the question paper that was given in past years. I am looking into it but it's a bit more of a medium term plan so I'm looking maybe towards the end of the year to come up with those videos but I definitely definitely am taking those considerations but I thought today's video is going to help you out a lot so let's get started. How to answer an essay question. All right so the basics. When it comes to an essay question, there are three main parts. You need an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. And it is absolutely crucial. You're probably going to hear me say this 20 times in the video. So if you want to start a challenge, you're more than welcome to jot down how many times I say introduction and conclusion within this video. And I'd actually like for you guys to comment down below how many times you've heard me say it. So let's start this challenge. So, with introduction and conclusion, you need to write the actual words. I know it sounds silly, but you will lose marks and we are going to get into that further into the um, further into this video, is that if you don't write the words introduction and conclusion, you can lose up to two to four marks. And I know it's a 40 mark question, which sounds like four marks is not that much. But trust me, every mark counts and you don't want to lose marks on just silly things such as layout. All right, then this is a mouthful. There is a lot going on here. All right, let's look to the right first. So then we've got introduction, content, conclusion and insight. So. When we discuss the introduction, the body conclusion, we're just using the word body as content, right? So you're going to have your introduction. This introduces the topic. So this is normally one or two bullets. And then your content, your body part, is going to be all of your facts and diving right into that essay. And I call it like the meat of the essay. Then you've got the conclusion, which is, again, one or two bullets. And then we're just summarizing all the information that we have already said. All right. So then when it comes to insight, insight, we are looking at your layout. We're looking at your originality and all those, all those types of things. So we're going to get into those now as well. But just a very important fact to remember, you can receive a maximum of 32 marks for your intro, body, and conclusion. Those are your actual facts. So you need to remember factually, we're looking for 32 marks. The rest of the eight marks is basically technicalities and layout, but make sure you try and get those marks too, because it's important to score those as well. So we make use of FLASO. The F stands for facts. 
The L stands for layout. The A stands for analysis. The O stands for synthesis. Sorry, the S stands for synthesis. And the O stands for originality. So, breaking those down. The L, we're looking at your layout. So there we're looking, have you written the words? Here we go. Introduction and conclusion. Have you written those words out? Then secondly, also to get those marks, is did you put an explanation by introduction and conclusion to award those two marks? Then analysis, here we are looking at did you mention all of the topics? When we're looking at the analysis, have you included all of the topics? Did you make mention of it? We also look at subheadings. And then synthesis is we're looking at the meat within what you've written. All right. So the quality of your facts. And then the O is originality. So did you try and make the essay original and more like your type of style? And the way that we make it original and our style is we add examples. That's why you'll hear in my videos, I'm examples, examples, examples. Because it helps so much, first of all, for understanding. And secondly, when doing essays, you have all those examples. Just make sure that the examples you're using are examples that the person marking your paper will know. And they are actual real life examples. Okay. So just be careful of that. Um, but that's where originality comes from. All right. Then, as I mentioned, here we're going to go to layout of structure. So two marks there. Okay. Breaking it down. Is there an introduction, a body, proper paragraphs, and a conclusion? If so, two marks. The A. Analysis and interpretation. Is the candidate able to break down the questions into headings, subheadings, and interpret it correctly to show that they understand what's being asked of them? If you are asked the purpose of the Skills Development Act, when you wrote it out, did you write it correctly? Did you understand what, what was being asked there? Marks can be allocated using this guide. So if all the headings are addressed, we'll see lower down, they normally mention it in bullets. If you have those all as your headings, then you get that one mark. And then interpretation is the way that you understood and the way that you answered that question. Then we move on to synthesis. All right. So are there relevant um, decisions and facts and responses, okay, based on the questions that were asked? If there are no relevant facts, unfortunately, you get zero there. Some relevant facts, you'll get a one. And then only relevant facts, you will get two. Then originality. So is there evidence of examples or recent information or current trends and developments that you have brought in and mentioned into your essay? If so, two marks. So... With lasso, you get eight marks. And then with the F for flasso, you'll get 32 marks, making a total of 40 marks for the essay. This is a huge chunk and it is so important. If you can nail the essay, you will do very well in business studies. If you can nail that essay, there's a lot of marks that you are gaining. All right, then continuing with the marking structure. So, no marks will be awarded in the following cases. If introduction and conclusion is not stated, that means you've literally have to write the word introduction, blah, 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 conclusion, blah, blah, blah. If you don't do that, you won't get any marks for that, right? Then, Introduction and conclusion is not supported by an explanation. So you've simply written the word introduction, underlined it, skipped a few lines and continue with your body. You can't do that. You need to have an explanation there. Then if content is repeated from the introduction and conclusion, so very important as well. 
Introduction and conclusion. We can't repeat um, information. So generally when it comes to introductions, what I suggest to students is to normally write the meaning of something. So if this is an essay on creative thinking, then write the meaning for creative thinking and write the purpose of creative thinking. But bearing in mind that if they don't ask you to mention the meaning of creative thinking. If so, then you might need to get a little bit creative <laughs> with it, all right? Um, but generally using a meaning or just talking about the topic as a whole, talking about creative thinking as a whole, mentioning that many businesses use creative thinking when going through difficult times, um, difficult situations calls upon different methods of creative thinking, then you can say such as brainstorming. So you see there, I'm not really saying the meaning of creative thinking, I'm talking about it as a whole. And I'm just using this one as an example. And then when it comes to your conclusion, is just concluding what you have written. Saying, it would be a good strategy if businesses make use of the above mentioned. So you can do that. You can say the above mentioned, but don't repeat it. All right. The above mentioned creativity strategies when facing turmoil or difficulties within the workplace. So make sure that what you've written in your intro and your conclusion, you don't repeat that information. So you can't repeat the bullets, if that makes sense. Because think about it from a marking perspective. I've given you marks for your introduction. Two marks for your introduction, for your two facts there, and two marks for your conclusion. Now you've gone and put them in the middle. So somewhere you're going to have to lose marks because I've already awarded those marks. So if you're going to repeat it, I can't give you double the marks. Does that make sense? I really hope that that does. Then originality is the use of examples, like I mentioned. Then if you use full sentences, you get two marks. If you use phrases or like you be very vague about how you answer, one mark. Then one mark perfect in the introduction. What does that mean? We need two facts. Yes. Right. Then essays are written in fact and bullet form. So you can make bullets. You can even make sub bullets if you want to. All right. But just because it's in bullet form does not mean we must write it as just words or phrases. You can't just write micro environment equals internal. Okay, you'll get one mark for that. If you write the micro environment can also be known as the internal environment, two marks, because it's a full sentence. All right, I know I'm explaining this and going through it in a lot of detail, but again, I need to stress the importance of essay questions. All right, moving on. <laughs> then, this is a nice structure. So, like I say in most of my videos, pause it at this stage. You can jot down this structure. It's a nice structure to use across your essays when you are studying with them and writing them out and preparing. All right, so here at the top, we've got introduction. One mark for layout. Why? We've written the word introduction. Okay, two facts should be given, so two bullets. Okay, there's one, there's two. And again, you will get the mark awarded because you've added an explanation to the introduction. You haven't just simply written the word introduction. Then, subheading one, whatever that may be. We will go through examples at the end of the video. So, subheadings are the bullets we need to answer. So, you'll see in the question, those are the bullets. And each essay is going to have different bullets as questions. So, we answer in a bullet form. One fact per bullet. Okay? You can't take a fact and split it and then expect to get more marks for that. Okay? That, unfortunately, is not allowed. All right. What I would suggest, and I'm going to explain this further on as well, is every subheading to have at least four bullets, all right? So four facts, at least. There is no cap in business studies. 
It's not like we're saying write a 2,000 word essay and you must count all your words. So if you want to put six because you remember six facts, please do that. Go for it. Okay. Because there are some questions that are up to 16 marks within the essay. So please, 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 I encourage you to, if ever, just to write more than write less. Rather write more and meet the maximum marks for that section than write less and then we can't award you extra marks. Okay. So first subheading, four bullets. Second subheading, four bullets. Third, four. Fourth, four. Right. Then just a note here. As we said, fact is 32 marks. Layout is our introduction and our conclusion. Analysis is the four headings and more than 16 facts. So when we're saying 16 facts, we are saying the four subheadings together, not, not each one individually, okay? So of the four, four, eight, 12, 16. Simple math, right. Then synthesis, two marks, for no irrelevant information, like we mentioned. Originality, at least two examples, okay? Again, more than I'll welcome to add more. Two marks for analysis. If you have 16 marks for facts, one mark for all the headings, and then again, one mark at the end for layout. Why? Because we've actually written the word conclusion, okay? Then one mark for two facts. So remember, intro is one fact, one mark. Conclusion, one fact, two marks. If you want to put two facts there, nothing's stopping you. All right, then here we have an example essay for grade 10. All right, before I get started, whoa, 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 before I lose you. Okay, if you are grade 11 and 12, you are more than welcome to skip past this grade 10 part because I have done an example for grade 11 as well as grade 12. So I'm going to go through the grade 10 example and then the 11 and the 12. So if you're in grade 11, skip past the section. If you're grade 12, skip past both sections and watch at the end. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to watch all three sections. I feel that way you'll get the most content out of it as well. All right. So I've made use of a past paper from June. If I'm not mistaken, it's from 2021. All right. So here we've got two essay questions. Okay. So I'm just going to read it from the beginning. So section C, answer one question in the section. Okay. I don't want to see you guys make that mistake where you do both essay questions. There's not enough time. One question. How do you pick which question to do? The one you know the most facts about. Okay, so what I used to do in high school when doing business studies, I would go through each one and <laughs> there'd be the bullet and I would like draw little, I don't know, mind map lines, sorry. And then I would try and see, I'd write out all the information I knew. Then I would look at both and see which one I knew more information about, okay? Um, and that would help me make my decision. I'd also look at which one is easier to explain. Which one can I use more examples? Which one is more relatable to me? That would help me within my decision making. All right. Then clearly indicate the question number of each question chosen. The answer to each question must start on a new page. So, for example, we're going to have question five or question six. Okay, so make sure that you write there question five or question six, whichever one you're picking. Alrighty, so with the first one, we can see it on business environments, socioeconomic issues. Okay, have done a video on this. You're more than welcome to go check that video out. Then we've got gambling piracy, crime, and strikes are but just some of the issues which impacts negatively on the business. Based on the statement above, discuss the following. So, meaning of socioeconomic issues, discuss the impact of crime and strikes on a business, outline the different types of gambling and explain their impact on a business, 
and then recommend solutions for piracy for the business. And there you can see 40 marks. Question six, business ventures or forms of ownership. The business cannot be established without proper consideration of factors that assist the entrepreneur to decide on the suitable form of ownership. Bearing the above statement in mind, write a detailed essay on the following aspects. Discuss continuity and liabilities as factors that must be considered when choosing the form of ownership. Distinguish between sole trader and private company. Justify the effectiveness of non-profit company as the best form of ownership. And then evaluate the impact of partnership as a form of ownership. Then what I've done is I've just added here the little snippets from the previous slides. Okay, it's another tip time. All right, so a tip that I have for you guys. So we mentioned that your intro your content, your body, and your conclusion is 32 marks. So a nice guideline for you, and I'm going to just highlight that once again, guideline, guideline, okay? It is not set in stone, it's not the rule, it's just a guide. Hope you got that. Is to take that 32 and divide it by the amount of facts that you are gonna be writing. All right, so the amount of bullets. So if we take the 32, we divide it by one, two, three, four. Okay, and we got eight. So there's a nice guideline for us to see. Each of those is going to be worth how many? Eight marks. Okay, generally in business studies, you get two marks per fact. I'm saying generally, some fact is only one mark, depending on if you're using full sentences or not. Okay. So if it's for two marks, then we can see we need how many? How many did I discuss earlier? Four, right? So we need four each. Okay, and this is a nice guideline that you can use throughout doing your essays. It's a nice way for you to see how much meat you need within that essay. But I mentioned that it's a guideline, correct? Okay, so as it's being a guideline, it does mean that some of the bullets are going to count more facts than the others. Okay, so use it as a guide and try and see. Normally when it comes to the meaning of something, there's normally less facts. It's not going to be for eight marks. Okay, but if something is an impact or discuss different types of something, we can see that those are bigger pieces, they're bigger chunks of meat, they're juicier, so we need to add more. Okay, so that's just a nice little tip. I've done the same for the essay at the bottom as well. You can see I've taken the 32 divided by four. Again, it's just a nice guideline for you to see, all right, roughly how many facts do I need? But again, I encourage you, if you know everything, you remember all of the bullets for crime and strikes, the impact write everything <laughs> okay because there's a very good chance you will then get full marks for that section which can boost your overall mark i don't want the students to be seeing all right i need a maximum of eight marks so i've put my four bullets now i'm done no 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 rather rather add more all righty then we will be going through question five in this video okay so of the two Lucky me, I chose question five. So I've taken it from the marking guidelines and the memo. So we will be going through question five next. All right, so starting with the question, what do we do first? <laughs> Introduction, okay. So there you can see we've got two facts there. All right, so we're talking about business environments, social economic issues, all right. The business does not operate in isolation. It is situated amongst the society. You could even mention there that a business operates um, with the market and macro environment, if you want to. You could also add that there. 
The customers are part of the society faced by social and economic issues. See, one mark per fact. Then it's saying you can add anything else that's also relevant to social economic issues there. But do you see that in this example, we didn't make use of the meaning because we have that as a bullet. So just take note of that. All right. Then we have the body. You don't need to write body. If anything, I don't think you should. I don't know if you'll lose marks for it, but you don't need to write the body. If you have introduction with a few bullets and then the next subheading, the marker will know that that is part of the body. All right. So the first bullet asks for the meaning of socioeconomic issues. Right. So there you can see we've got two bullets there. These are problems, fact, there you can see one mark, from people, and you can put social in brackets, and economic, money in brackets, circumstances. Two marks there. These issues need to be considered by the business, mark, as they impact on them. I would have said as they impact on the business, but that's also perfectly fine. So there you can see, you can also add any other relevant information there as well. So there, four marks were awarded. The maximum was five marks for that one. Moving on. Then they asked for types of gambling. So we've got legal, illegal, and unofficial lottery types. Okay, do you see that because they didn't mention the types, you're getting a mark for just mentioning the type of gambling. So just remember that when they've asked you to list something or give a type of something, that they most likely will give you a mark for just mentioning it. So legal gambling, one mark. Is gambling allowed by the law? Legal gambling is licensed at casinos, lotto, betting on horses, and betting on sports. There you can see one mark. So you got one mark for legal, legal gambling and one mark for the fact. Okay. Then a maximum that you can get there. So a maximum for every type is two marks. Right. So then we have illegal gambling. Mark. Is gambling not allowed by the law? So it's unlicensed casinos and bingo halls. You can see one mark there. Pyramid schemes where investors are promised money for people they recruit. Another mark there. Unofficial lottery type schemes. Money laundering where large amounts of illegal money enters the economy but hitting the source can either be by corrupt politicians, drug traffic traffickers, illegal gamblers, etc. One mark there. All right. So there you can see the maximum marks we can give is eight. So we gave two, four, six for the ones. But there you can see, as I mentioned, you can give more because the most amount you can get there is eight. So just going back with the previous one, five marks were awarded. I said to you, study four bullets, two marks per bullet. So you would have gotten a maximum of five, but you gave eight. Okay, do you see where I'm going with this? The next one is eight. That's what I'm saying. Go with that as a rule, but always add more as well. Alrighty. Then the impact of gambling on businesses. This was the next bullet. Gambling can be addictive. Mark. As players hope to win. Another mark. Poor people can lose the little money. One mark they have and be able to support themselves or their families, another mark. They also have less money, one mark, to spend on goods and services which affects businesses negatively, another mark. It contributes to poverty, one mark, which is a problem in South Africa, another mark. And then you can add anything else that's relevant to gambling there. So you can see there we've got two, four, six, eight marks and the max was eight marks okay there they awarded two two marks per fact then the impact of crime on the business the business loses one mark 
value products, cash, vehicles, and furniture and other possessions, another mark. The business has to put on expensive, one mark, security measures, another mark. Insurance premiums also increase, mark, where there is high risk incidents of the crime, another mark is awarded there, which adds to the running cost of the business. That fact has three marks. Customers will be scared, one mark, to buy from a business situated in an area with high crime rate, another mark. It discourages new businesses, one mark, from starting up, another mark. So there you can see we've got two, four, six, eight, eleven. So we've got eleven there, but the max that we can be awarded is eight there. All right, you can mention examples within this as well. All right, I know that in my area, not, not long ago at one of the malls, there was a um, hostage situation where customers were being held in gunpoint at one of the retail stores. So we can, you can use that example within that. You can mention that you as a customer are scared of going to the shopping mall because of this crime that happened. And new businesses might not want to start up or open within that shopping mall because of this. Okay, so there's an example that you can make use of. But again, make sure it's relevant and make sure it's something that people know of. I think not long ago, maybe a year ago, two years ago, there was also a hostage situation at, I think it was East Trend Mall. You could use that one as well. It made huge headlines. Okay, so that's where we bring in the originality. Then the impact of strikes on businesses. When workers go on strike, productivity decreases. Sales of the business is affected. Two marks there. Fellow workers and customers, one mark, may be intimidated by striking workers, another mark. Damage to business property may occur, one mark, which increases the cost for the business, another mark. Business losses, one mark, profits during the period of strike, another mark there. Okay, there we've got two, four, six, eight. The maximum we can award there is eight marks. All right, so you can see there, um, you can see as we're going through this, the examples of how you write your facts and how they expect you to construct an essay within the exams. Then we have solutions to piracy, which was another bullet point, the last bullet point. So we've got copyright, patent, and trademark. As, you, as I mentioned again, because those are the solutions, and they're almost, as we can say, like types of solutions, we're getting a mark for just mentioning the type. All right, so copyright. Only an owner of intellectual property has the right to produce and copy it. Two marks. You can mention something there. All right, you can mention that the logo for Nike can only be made and produced by Nike and that no one else can use the Nike logo because they have the copyright. Okay. Patent. Someone who holds a patent has the sole right to produce and sell an invention. Two marks. I would also add an example there. Trademark. A unique mark that represents a business enterprise and belongs to that business enterprise. Sorry, this is where my Nike example comes in. Okay, two marks. It includes words, slogans, designs, and symbols, two marks. You can add there, the tick symbol for Nike is an example of a symbol. Right. Registered trademarks may not be used by anybody else, except by the business or the enterprise or the person it belongs to, two marks. Okay, so the max they're looking for there is nine marks. So if we're going to break it down there, it's one mark per solution plus one bullet, which is two marks. Okay, so it's three each. Then we have our conclusion. I'm going to say it again. We need to actually write the words conclusion. Okay. Another example of why this is also done, well, for one, layout. Secondly, how is the marker supposed to know that the next bit you're mentioning is part of the conclusion or if it's just 
part of your body. Okay, that's also why it needs to be separated. So, conclusion. Remember, we're talking about socioeconomic issues. The business and the government needs to address the socioeconomic problems that affect the communities. All right, two marks there. You can add any other relevant information there, but the maximum marks you'll get there is two marks. All right, so that wraps up the essay example for grade 10. Okay, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to jot them down below. But I hope that going through that example, it helps you to see how they want you to structure it, how much information is expected of you, and how you can basically plan and outline. And I gave you some guidelines on how to write these essays and what is expected and how much you need to write. Okay. All right, grade 11s, it's now your turn. Okay. As I mentioned, if you are grade 12, just skip right past to the grade 12 section. Okay, so grade 11s, here's an essay example for you. Again, I've also taken this from a June paper. As far as I'm aware, it is a 2021 paper. They're on my resources at the end of the video, as well as my description. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so answer any one of the questions in the section below. I'm sure you guys as grade 11, you've written enough essays in grade 10. So I'm sure you guys know and understand this and I don't have to go through too much detail explaining that you need to answer only one question. Right. Then it's important that you indicate the question number as well as you writing it on a new page. Okay, so then we've got question five and question six. All right. Business environments, so adapting to challenges of the business environments. Percy owns a vegetable shop. He supplies fruits and vegetables to spuzzer shops in the area. Last year, many farmers lost their crops due to an increase in rainfall. The government recently introduced regulations on the price of perishable products. This has a negative impact on his business. Percy has decided to form power relationships with other business stakeholders. Then, you are a specialist in guiding businesses with good business strategies. Write an essay on the following aspects. There's our bullets. Okay? Then, like I mentioned with the grade 10s as well, they say here for the introduction, the content, and the conclusion, you're looking for a max of 32 marks. So if you take that 32 and we divide it by our four bullets, I know this one gets split a little bit more, we can see that we are going to end up with eight marks per bullet. So that's a nice indication and guideline, highlighting the word guideline once again. It's not set in stone, it's not the rule. Sometimes they do ask more so normally when it's the meaning of something it's a little bit less they're not going to ask you eight marks for the meaning but when we're talking about discussing examples of strategies and describing advantages there we're going to have a lot more meat and a lot more content but as i mentioned it's a nice guideline to make use of and in the beginning of the video we mentioned that we need four bullets per subheading which gives us our eight marks so Explain the meaning of power relationships. Discuss the following examples of power relationships. Strategic alliance agreements. Persuasion of large investors. Company representatives influence. Describe the advantages of networking. Advise businesses on how they can adapt to legislation as a macro environment challenge. 40 marks. Okay. Then, business environments, contemporary socioeconomic issues. Labor relations regulates the relationship between the employers and the employees. Trade unions promote labor relations, but employees can take industrial action in the form of strikes or go slows. With reference to the above statements, we're going to write an essay. Explain the difference between a go slow and a lockout. Discuss the negative impact of strikes on businesses. Describe the purpose of the Labor Relations Act and advise businesses on the functions of trade unions in promoting labor relations. 40 marks. For this video, I'm going to answer question six. 
So we're going to look at the contemporary socioeconomic issues for grade 11 as an example and I've taken it straight from the marking guidelines and the memo for this next part. All right, so there you can see I've written question six, okay? Again, indicating which question I'm doing. All right, introduction. Again, we need to write that out. I, ho I hope your countdown's going great. I hope you're like jotting down how many times I've used the word introduction and the fact that you must write it in this video. It's crazy. Okay, but I can't stress it enough. Then, we know we need a maximum of two marks there. So, I have been given a lot of options here, but you need a maximum of two. If you're going to write four bullets, you're only going to get two marks. Okay. Industrial action refers to action undertaken by employees to protest against employment issues. The Labor Relations Act makes certain provisions in terms of industrial actions and lockouts. A trade union needs to be registered with the Registrar of Labor Relations. Labor Relations involves three parties. So we're looking at the employer, employee and the government. Then you can add any other relevant information that's to do with industrial relations or industrial actions. We're looking at like employment. Okay, as well as the Labor Relations Act and trade unions. Okay, maximum of marks there, two marks. Then body, okay. I wouldn't necessarily write the word body. The fact that you've written introduction with an explanation and this is an next subheading makes the marker know that this is part of the body. I'm not sure if you'll lose marks for it, but I wouldn't advise writing the actual word body. Okay, but introduction and conclusion, that's non-negotiable. Those you have to write. Right, so differences between a go slow and lockout. Okay, you can see that it says sub max is four. So with explaining each, we need four marks, four marks. Going back to the eight marks per bullet. Okay. Go slows. The employees still carry on with their work, one mark, but at a much slower pay, slower, one mark, pace than normal, another mark. So that fact has three marks. The employees aim to disrupt the workplace, one mark, production at another mark. You can add an example there if you're welcome to, um, just to add for originality. Then lockouts. It occurs when an employer locks employees out of a workplace, one mark. It is a power tactic employer uses when a labor dispute between management, one mark, and unions is unresolved, another mark. Employers often institute a lockout during a strike to ensure the safety of their premises, one mark. Equipment and working employees, another mark. So again, four marks for the meaning of go slow, four marks for lockout, making a sub max of eight marks. The next one they asked is the impact of a strike on business operations. Strikes lead to loss of productivity and a decrease in economic growth, two marks. Loss of revenue, one mark. And financial loss on business operations, another mark. Looting, destruction of business property and infrastructure, one mark. And intimidation of non-striking workers, another mark. Businesses have to hire employees to replace striking workers, one mark and increases the training costs of new employees, another mark. Businesses may lose market share, one mark, or customers to competitors, another mark, during the period of a strike, three marks for that one bullet. Strikes can lead to businesses to shut down, one mark, spells disaster to both parties, another mark. The image of reputation of the business, one mark, might be damaged, another mark. Relation between management and workers, one mark, is negatively affected, another mark. The supplies of goods and services, one mark, is interrupted, another mark. Okay, they're saying a max there of 12 marks, okay, that is a bit higher than the 8 that I originally said. Again, what I mentioned as well for the grade 10s is that 
The eight marks per heading is a guideline, not set in stone. But if you do, so let's say for this example, you know eight facts. Go for it. Write your eight. You'll get, I mean, you're writing worth 16 marks, but you'll definitely get and bank your 12. Whereas if you write three facts times it all by two, you're only getting six marks. So where you know more information, definitely write more. You're not getting marks deducted and negative marking for writing more. It's not like an essay where it's 2,000 words or 3,000 words. You can write as much as you like, to be honest. And if anything, I would write a bit more to be safe than sorry, to be honest. Next one. The purpose of the Labor Relations Act. All right. Here is another max of 12 marks. Okay. Oh, just, rem just remembering, I, I didn't I mention of the grade 11s. With the ones that I'm showing, they show more marks than what is, um, well, what the mark allocation is. They just do that because of all the different options that students can have within the essay. So just know that if you are studying from these and from past papers and memos, you only need to study the max that they're showing you. Okay, you can even highlight, if it says max of four marks, Highlight those two bullets, get your four marks, you don't have to do the rest. Okay, if that makes sense. All right, so Labor Relations Act. It provides a framework where employees, trade unions, and workers work together, one mark, to discuss matters related to employment, one mark. Example there, wages and conditions of employment, another mark. It promotes orderly negotiation and employee participation, one mark. In decision making in the workplace, another mark. It promotes resolution, one mark, of labor disputes, another mark there. It promotes fair, one mark, employment practices, another mark. It provides simple procedures, one mark, for the registration of trade unions and employees' organizations, another mark. It regulates the rights of trade unions and facilitates, one mark, collective bargaining, another mark. It regulates the effectiveness of bargaining councils, one mark, and statutory councils, another mark. It establishes the Commission of Conciliation, Mediation and Arbitration, CCMA, to resolve labour disputes, one mark, through statutory conciliation, mediation, and arbitration, another mark. It endorses the right to strike against retrenchments, one mark, and facilitates labor disputes, another mark. It establishes labor courts and labor appeal courts, one mark, to deal with labor issues, another mark. It deals with, one mark, I wouldn't have allowed that there, I would have put it a bit further, but okay. It deals with strikes and lockouts and workplace forums, two marks there, and then any other relevant information you may have of the purpose of the Labor Relations Act. All right, then the functions of the trade union, a max of 14 marks there. Okay, protecting the interests of the workers, two marks. Representing the interest of general society and minority groups through media and negotiation, Two marks. Influencing management for better working conditions, salaries and benefits, two marks. Improving the material benefits of their members, two marks. Advancing the interest of members, two marks. Providing legal and financial advice, two marks. Providing benefits and educational facilities to its members, two marks. Protecting the interest of their members, during disciplinary procedures, two marks. And then any other relevant information you have on the function of trade unions. Right, then conclusion. Again, I'm going to say it. You need to write the actual words conclusion in order to get those marks for layout. Remember of the 32 marks as well, um, of the beginning of the facts, you also need to have the conclusion with an explanation. Okay, otherwise you lose marks. And it's silly marks to lose for just not writing the word conclusion. 
Alrighty, so maximum of two marks there. So I've got two options. So if both were given, I would have had to only have awarded one mark. Um, sorry, two marks for one of the facts there. The Labor Relations Act regulates the organizational rights of trade unions and promotes and facilitates collective bargaining. The Labor Relations Act requires agreement through sound labor relations between trade unions and employer organizations. All right, then you would have been awarded your two marks and then a total of 40 marks would have been awarded for this essay, just remembering originality and adding your examples in there. All right, we've made it to the grade 12s. Okay, now your time to shine. All right, so we can see there I've extracted two different essay questions from a past paper. If I'm not mistaken, it's the June 2021 paper that I have made use of. All right, so I'm sure you guys definitely know by now, you need to indicate which question you're answering and make sure you write your essay on it different page and make sure you only answer one question part of the essay section. Okay, I'm sure you guys definitely had your trial run grade 10 and grade 11. So by now I'm hoping that all the grade 12s do know how to write an essay, but let's go through it. Question five, business ventures and investment securities. That video is coming out soon. So please do check that one out. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted on the lives and livelihoods of many South Africans. This meant that current and potential shareholders had to review their forms of investment. Various factors need to be considered when making an investment decision. Write an essay on investment securities in which you include the following aspects. Outline the right of ordinary and preference shares. Elaborate on return on investment and liquidity as factors to be considered when making an investment decision. Evaluate the following forms of investments. Government or, as we know it as, RSA retail saving bonds and fixed deposits. And then advise potential shareholders on the benefits of unit trusts as a good investment for 40 marks. Then we have question six. Business operations, quality of performance. Businesses can ensure sustainability and profitability if they produce high quality products. This will result in a total client or customer satisfaction, which can be achieved through adequate financing and capacity and the formation of quality circles in the workplace. Profitability would improve by reducing the cost of quality. Write an essay on the quality of performance in which you include the following aspects. Outline the differences between quality control and quality assurance. Elaborate on the roles of quality circles within the workplace. Evaluate the impact of the following total quality management TQM elements of the business. So we're looking at total client customer satisfaction and adequate financing and capacity. Recommend ways in which TQM can reduce the cost of quality for 40 marks. All right, on the right here, I've just included, as we mentioned in the beginning, the maximum of 32 marks plus your insight. Your insight is lasso. Okay, there you can see it down there below. All right, so a nice rule of thumb to make use of, but not set in stone. If you've watched from the grade 10, 11 and 12, you'll heard I've been um, a broken record repeating myself, but okay. Anyway, so what I would advise is if you take that 32 marks, which is our introduction, content and conclusion, and divide it by the amount of bullets that they're asking, here we can see it's four and there is four you'll see that it's eight marks per bullet. So it's nice as a guideline, not set in stone, guideline to make use of to see how many facts you need to add for each bullet. But again, it is a guideline. So a lot of the time, if they are asking for differences or meanings, those ones are a little bit less. 
when you're getting to the last questions like evaluate and advise and recommend, those ones typically are higher marks. But as I mentioned, it's a nice guideline to know that you need at least eight for each. And if you know more, and definitely add more as well onto that and don't forget your examples. Okay, the example that we are going to go through in the next section is question six, quality of performance. I've done this as a video as well, so please make sure to check that video out as nice revision. All right, so you can see question six, introduction. By now, grade 12s, so you should know that you need to write the words introduction in order to get your layout marks. Okay, maximum of two marks there. You can see that we've got a lot more than two marks here, but these are just all the different options that you could have added um, into your essay, and you're more than welcome to study all of them um, just for extra information as well. So businesses need to take care of the tolerance level limit sorry, by using either quality control or quality assurance or even both so that quality of product or services remain the same year after year. Quality circles are groups of workers who do the same or similar work who meet regularly to identify and analyze as well as solve work-related problems as per schedule they follow, like once a month or quarterly. Total Quality Management, TQM, is a management approach or system that focuses on continuous quality improvement throughout the business through usage of its elements that have both the positives and negatives. Okay, and then any other relevant information you could have mentioned there, but a maximum of two marks, making sure that I also wrote the words introduction. All right, then we've got the differences between quality control and quality assurance. You can do it in a table form. <sighs> I'm a bit indifferent of whether I want to say I prefer it or I don't prefer it. I'm a bit indifferent about it. But you're welcome to do it either in a table form or just write quality control explaining and then quality assurance explaining. All right, a max of six marks for each. So six marks for quality control and six marks for quality assurance coming to a sub max of 12 marks there. So, quality control. Inspection of the final product, one mark. To ensure that it meets the required standards, one mark. It includes setting targets and measuring performance, one mark. Taking corrective measures, another mark. Checking raw materials, employees, machinery, workmanship and products, one mark. To ensure that high standards are maintained, another mark. Quality assurance. Carried out during and after the production process, one mark, to ensure that required standards have been met at every stage of the process, another mark. It ensures that every process is aimed at getting the product right the first time, one mark, and prevents mistakes from happening again, another mark. The building in of quality, one mark, as opposed to checking for quality another mark. Max of six marks each, 12 marks for that bullet. The role of quality circles in the workplace. So here's a max of 14 marks. Solve problems related to quality, one mark, and implement improvements, another mark. Investigate problems, one mark, and suggest solutions to management, another mark. Ensure that there is no duplication, one mark, of activities and tasks in the workplace, another mark. Make suggestions for improving systems, one mark, and processes in the workplace, another mark. Improve the quality of product, services, and productivity, one mark, through regular reviews of quality processes, another mark. Monitor reinforce strategies, one mark, to improve the smooth running of business operations, another mark. Reduce costs of redundancy, one mark, in the long run, another mark. Increase employees' morale and motivation, two marks there. Quality circles discuss, one mark, 
ways of improving the quality of work or workmanship, another mark, contribute towards the improvement, one mark, and development of the organization, another mark. Reduce costs and wasteful efforts, one mark, in the long run, another mark. Increase the demand of products and services, one mark, of the business, another mark. It creates harmony and high performance, one mark, in the workplace. It builds a healthy relationship, one mark, between the employer and employee. It improves employees' loyalty, one mark, and commitment to the organization and its goals, another mark. It improves employees' communication, one mark, at all levels of the business, another mark. It develops a positive attitude or sense of involvement, one mark, in decision-making process of the services offered, another mark. And then any other relevant information that you have on this, and don't forget your examples for originality. A sub maximum of 14 marks there. Evaluation of the impact of the total quality management element on a large business, TQM. Oh, I forgot to mention, when they mention in the essay the impact. Now I'm sure you've watched enough of my videos and you've listened in class to know that in business studies, we have an impact that is both positive and negative. So just, just, just remember this. If they ask you for the impact, they're not asking specific positive or negative. So if you write only positive, you can get the marks awarded for that. If you write only negative, you can get the marks awarded for that. Okay. Um, if they ask specifically the positive impact, then okay, yes, you have to only write the positive. If you write the negatives, you're not going to get marks for it. But what I would do, in my opinion, to be very honest, is I would write positives and negatives for both, to be very honest. But I'm just letting you know that when they say impact, you can't get deducted marks if you're only going to write the positives or only write the negatives because the question didn't state which one you should include. But I would include both. Total client and customer satisfaction. Positives. Large businesses use market research and customer surveys, one mark, to measure or monitor customer satisfaction and analyze customers' needs, another mark. Continually promote, one mark, a positive company image, another mark. May achieve a state of total customer satisfaction, one mark, if the business follows sound business practices that incorporate all stakeholders, another mark. Strive to understand and fulfill customer expectations, one mark, by aligning cross-functional teams across critical processes, another mark. Ensures that cross-functional teams understand its core competencies, one mark, and develop or strengthen it, another mark. May lead to high customer retention or loyalty, one mark, and businesses may be able to charge higher prices, another mark. Large businesses may be able to gain access, one mark, to the global market, another mark. May lead to increased, one mark, competitiveness or profitability, another mark. Then we're looking at the negatives. So before I go into that quickly, we can see a sub max of six marks. Okay, so if you put, I'm just working out here quickly. For the positives, if you had two facts, two marks each, that would have been four. And then negatives, two marks, you would have actually gotten an eight marks there. Um, and then obviously they'll just take a max of six. Okay, so there you can just see the mark allocation and distribution. The negatives. Employees who seldom come into contact with customers, one mark, often do not have a clear idea of what will satisfy their needs, another mark. Monopolistic companies have an increased bargaining power, one mark. They do not necessarily have to please their customers, one mark. Not all employees may be involved or committed, one mark, to total client satisfaction, another mark. Then we're looking at adequate financing and capacity. We're going to look at the positives and the negatives, just remembering what I mentioned 
about the impact. Large businesses have sufficient financing, one mark, to test everything before implementing, one mark. They can afford to have systems in place, one mark, to prevent errors in processes, defects in raw materials or product, one mark. They are able to afford product research, market researchers, one mark, to gather information, another mark. They can afford to purchase, one mark, quality raw materials and equipment, another mark. Next, the negatives. If the demand for companies' product increases, one mark, orders begin coming in faster than expected and the company lacks the capital required to fund the production of the stock to fill the orders, another mark. These rapidly growing companies can consume large amounts of capital, one mark, as they try to balance normal operations of expansion, another mark. Total of six marks there, and then a maximum total for this section with the impact of both of these, we're looking at 12 marks. Ways in which TQM can reduce the cost of quality. Introduce quality circles to discuss ways of improving quality of work or workmanship, two marks. Share responsibility for quality output amongst management of workers, two marks. Train employees at all levels so that everyone understands their role in management, two marks. Develop work systems that empower employees to find new ways of improving quality, two marks. Work closely with suppliers to improve the quality of raw materials and inputs, two marks. Improve communication about quality challenges or deviations so that everyone can learn from the experience, two marks. Reduce investment on expensive but ineffective inspection procedures in the production process, two marks. Implement proactive maintenance programs for equipment, machinery, to reduce and eliminate breakdowns, two marks. Right, I know it doesn't mention it there, but for this section, it is eight marks. So it's a max of eight marks, four bullets. Then conclusion, the last time I'll probably say this in this video, yay, is we have to write out the word conclusion, otherwise you are going to lose marks for layout and you can't afford to lose any marks Come guys, it's silly marks. Don't make sure you get those marks and don't lose them. Okay, so maximum of two marks here. It is advisable for the business to decide whether it does quality control or quality assurance because financial implications can be huge if they want to do both. Two marks. Total quality management is made up of elements which can be wise to analyze all of them to determine advantages and disadvantages, two marks. Good business recommended to have quality circles as part of continuous improvement to processes and systems in order to improve business operations because competitors keep on strategizing for survival, two marks. Then you would have gotten for that whole essay, a total of 40 marks, which is the max. And then we've reached the end of the video. Here are the resources that I've made use of. You can see there's quite a lot here. The first one, the essay guide, you're more than welcome to make use of it. Just bear in mind it is a few years old, so things could have changed since then. I, I used it, but very filtered. And then there's where you can go get test papers for grades 10, 11, and 12. Most of them have the question paper as well as the memo. So definitely go check those out. I find that going through question papers and memos when I was a student was exceptionally helpful. And I used to do it for every test and exam, going all the way into university as well. I found them to be very helpful. It showed me what they expect and how to answer questions for the exam and as you guys know going through the essay there's a lot of marks that you can gain there that can definitely boost your overall mark thank you so much for watching my video today i wish you guys all the best for the june exams if you have any questions please post them down below i hope you guys found this video to be informative helpful and i really really hope that it is going to give you some awesome tips 
and some awesome guidelines when writing your essays for business studies. I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel. Bye for now, guys. Thank you.